Hello everyone. In this example, I will show how Cypress using jQuery selectors can select elements in very incredibly powerful ways. Let's say I have a table and it shows some games where different teams played away or at home. They probably won or lost some games and each game has an ID. And I will start with trying to find all rows where the team name is Sharks and that's it. Right, so we know that the team name is in the first column and we need to select the rows. So we'll say sci get table t body all the rows. But we don't want to select all the rows because that will give us everything. We want to filter them. And this is where the you know new CSS or jQuery selector has is so useful. So right now there is nothing, so it times out because it's not a valid selector. But what do we want to Filter. We want to find all the rows where the specific child in a column contains specific text, sharks. So we are interested only in rows that have a cell that is the first child, right? The first column. So the column in selector and child starts with one. So in the first column, we want to have only the cells that contains the text sharks. And now we only filter it and we select only the rows where the first column has sharks in the first column. Perfect. Now, if we have multiple column values, for example, we want to set, find all the rows where the sharks have one, right? So we look at the result column number three. Then we can take the same approach only after we're getting all the rows, we'll filter them again. And so in this case, I will write this slightly differently. I will take all the rows using SciGet. And then I will filter them. Right? So I'll move the has filter right here. So right now it does the same thing, but now I can filter again. And I'll take the same expression. And now I'm looking at the column number three, the result. So three should contain the word one, not one, win, sorry. Okay, so how many? We have only one row, and that's the correct one. Row. Well, if we can do it using Cypress Sci filter command, we can do it using jQuery. So in this case, we can do the same thing by using that. So we get all the rows and it's a jQuery object. And we can return that jQuery object where we call filter, which is a jQuery method and call it twice. Okay, so uh, let's say I should have length one, so only one row, right, which is the same thing. Now, if we can do it inside of then, then it becomes really flexible, right? Because we can iterate over all columns and values and keep filtering the result until we get the final result. So let's say that we want to find all the columns where we're giving an object, right? For example, we'll say the search we want to find all the games that were away and the result is a win. Okay, so we're giving the uh, column heading and the value of a cell that we want to find. So how do we do that? So before we knew the column index, right now we don't. And you know, this is not ideal test. You want to know the index of a column right away so that you know that location is the second column. But in this case, we have to look up in the table itself. Okay, so how do we do that? We grab the table head and we can, uh, this is heading. Okay, so what do we do here? We take our search and first we grab the head and in the head we find all individual column heading cells. So from this jQuery object, we find the head column cell that contains, and we need to put quotes just to be safe, Heading. Okay, so this will find it, and all we have to do, we have to get the index, right? Because it will just find the result, let's say, and then will tell us it's index three. And we need to add one because by default the index is starts at zero, but we need to use index that starts at one. Okay, so this indices, if we log them, let's say, yeah, okay, okay, so we had the search object location and result, and it says, that location is column two, right? Location and the result is column three. 
Perfect. So now we can use those indices to filter the rows. Okay, because we need to use it, we'll have to move it again into the dot then block. We get all the rows, we get this, and now we'll iterate over that indices and we'll filter with each column and value. Okay, so this is my iteration. I'm using low dash that's built in. It just, you know, saves a few commands compared to standard JavaScript methods. So we iterate over indices, we have a text value and the index. And all we'll do, we'll filter the current set of rows using jQuery filter, just like we've done above before, right? Like right here. And here we'll say, okay, if a row has a cell at position, right? index but contains quotes text value okay and after we are done filtering because notice we are overwriting so first we get all the rows then we filter once twice as many as properties as we have right here we'll return that jquery object and cypress automatically wraps it so we don't have to okay so we're looking for all the rows well location was away and result was a win location is away result is a win that's the only one that's there so this is how you can write a test that uses jquery selectors that are incredibly powerful to find elements that contain other elements that contain certain text for more examples of selectors and finding elements look at my glebbachmutov.com slash sapish dash examples i will put the link in the description of this video